Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cultivate. We have a special guest today that I really didn't know a lot about until I did some research. And we will be speaking to Dr. Shade, who is the owner of Quicksilver Scientific. Quicksilver Scientific is a high-end nutritional supplement company, and he can explain that further. Welcome, Dr. Shade. Hello, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I am so excited, Dr. Shade, that you accepted our invitation to come on today. I've been reading so much about you, and I don't know if we're going to be able to squeeze this into 30 or 45 minutes, so we're probably going to have to have you on again. There's a lot to talk about. Yes, lots to talk about, all focused around science, of course. So give me a little bit about your background. Uh, yeah, you know, it was a long and winding background to get here uh, from originally being a young kind of science-minded guy and then getting into college, having some mind-expanding episodes that uh, led me into doing <laughs> organic farming for a while. And then, uh, you know, I joke that I went out of business as an organic farmer the year Whole Foods was founded. Uh, so it was a little in the low-rent time of organic. And uh, then I went back to school and I was looking at agriculture and environmental science, like pollution around agriculture, and then went and got a PhD and was looking at uh, toxic metals through the environment. And mercury was my focus. And I patented some technology for testing different forms of mercury in the body and separating out what's coming from fish, what's coming from uh, dental amalgams, the silver fillings, and uh, started a company around that technology and soon saw that I had to develop solutions around it. You can't just say, here's a problem, figure it out. <laughs> right. And I thought there were solutions at the time. And as I tried to use them, I saw they were all toxic. There was this use of pharmaceutical chelators for getting metals out. And nobody seemed to understand the natural way that the body uh, mounts detoxification. Uh, how do you tie a toxin onto something you make and ship it out of the body? And so I started looking at that, especially after I tried the chelators and kind of got myself sick. I looked at how the, how's the body supposed to do this? And uh, it revolves around the system called the glutathione system. It's this sort of super molecule that you make for detoxification, free radical control, immune balance. And I'm like, oh, okay, there is a way. And the problem was it doesn't get into the body well. You can't take a capsule of it. And so I had to start looking at uh, advanced bioavailability systems, often called delivery systems. How do you get something from outside your body to sure. into the blood? Right. And this led me to looking at liposomes and nano emulsions. These are these little nano fat droplets that house different nutrients. And if you make them right, make them small enough, they'll, uh, they'll permeate right through your oral cavity into the blood. You'll take these intraorally, you'll start absorbing there, you swallow, they go in. So we got these, we were able to get glutathione in. We started building whole systems for detoxification, first of metals and then expanding out the plastics and molds and uh, all kinds of different toxins. But then we saw that one of the basic blocks to detoxification is your mind. And it's not that you don't think you can detoxify, it's that you're like cranked, you're all stressed out and that's called yeah. fight or flight. And uh, it's... Uh, glutamate dominance in the brain and you're you're just your autonomic nervous system is locked up like that and we were working with autism a lot and we had to like calm that down you see they're always agitated right and because of this brain uh is is polarized to fight or flight or glutamate dominance and we were trying to work with that we were working with a neurotransmitter called gaba and then enters cbd and I'm like, somebody brought it to me. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> we made some and we're like, whoa, this stuff's awesome. And it was great on pain. And it was a really just melted down stress. And so we started applying that first in the autism world. I, I would lecture at a place called Autism One and then other conferences. And boom, once we were able to put CBD in place and calm the neural structure down, then you could go and you could detoxify really, really rapidly. So that was a big game changer for us. And it was our delivery system 
these nano emulsions that were able to get the CBD into the body super, super quick. Like with cannabinoids, people talk about uh, a peak in the blood after two hours, three hours, eight hours if you're eating a brownie, but we were able to peak it between 15 and 30 minutes. Just boom, right in, really soften the system out and then go about all our work with detoxification. And so that led us into the cannabis realm and then we just started developing more and more products around there, going into THC, which we license out tech for, and building out our some arsenal of all the different things that we use in health, whether it's immune or anti-aging, uh, hormone things. Uh, we just started applying this delivery system to all these different uh, physical issues. So you said that, uh, well, first of all, why the environment? What in your background sparked your interest for, the, for environmental issues? Uh, you know, why anything? You know, you're just drawn into, you know, uh, people like to have this story, like, well, when I was six years old, I saw this, you know, stuff leaking out of this drum and a dead duck next to it. And I knew I was going to save the world. You know, uh, I don't have that story, <laughs> you know, it just, it just happens. You just go where you're meant to go. And if you keep doing that and everything unfolds, I, I couldn't imagine having any different life, but I can't say I wanted to save the world. It just, it's, it's just the way it rolled. That's the path that went, well, I'm glad. So you're, you have such a, a diverse, um, uh, diverse products that, are from detox to calming. And you also have some segments that I'd like to talk about. One is pharmacy. So kind of talk me through the pharmacy products. Yeah, you know, we, we have a range of different products. Some are, uh, and they all feature this high delivery. And some of them are like single products, like it's glutathione in a liposome. And others are blends of Pure products. It's glutathione with vitamin C and some selenium. And others are whole plant extracts. So if I use the term nutraceutical, uh, think of something like curcumin, which is used for inflammation. That is a pure compound that comes out of turmeric. And resveratrol, we talk about that in red wine and it helps us live longer and it's in Chinese knotweed too. That's a pure compound taken out of a plant. So there's botanical whole plant extracts. And, you know, it's kind of like when you talk about an isolate versus full spectrum. So yeah. you can have a, a, a pure compound or you can have a whole plant extract. And so what we call our pharmacy line are pure compounds or one or two or three pure compounds together. Yeah. Might be vitamins. Uh, it could be a neurotransmitter like GABA or an antioxidant like glutathione. And then we have our apothecary line. Our apothecary line would be more like that alchemical print there of with uh, the alchemist speaking to Mother Nature. Uh, and there you got a whole plant extract. So we have a lot of adaptogens, which are uh, things that help your body adapt to stress and give you energy. And those are a bunch of whole plant compounds all brought together. Uh, so those are, those are the kind of the two lines that we have. So it's interesting you, you're talking about glutathione. So I take that, but I take it in a capsule, but it does come from a compound pharmacy supplement company. Okay. But if you just said that that's probably not the best way to take it, that I'm very interested about um, your, it's sublingual, right? Liposome. Yeah, we'll get you into some liposomes. You'll see the difference. Uh, okay. I yeah, I'd, I'd have to see what the capsule is. There's there's something called S-acetyl glutathione, which is very expensive, oh. but that has better bioavailability than regular. And if you're going to go to a capsule, that's probably the only one that would work. You know what? I bet that's what it is. That yeah. might be it. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know who told me to take that is my hormone doctor. Ah. Not my regular doctor, my hormone doctor. He turned me on to some amazing supplements. They're great. And I was just on a, a podcast yesterday and the, I brought up hormones and how important they are. And you can't get optimized unless you got your hormones dialed in. And the interviewer was talking about, you know, finding a doctor. I'm like, don't just leave your regular doctor, your regular doctor and go find a hormone doctor. You'll find them through A4M or AMMG, these hormone groups. They got to be trained in that or they will know nothing about it. 
100%. And it took me a while, but I, I uh, found an amazing hormone doctor here and I've been yeah. on hormone for about four years now, but um, it's just interesting that you brought up specifically glutathione since you have- yeah, uh, I lecture to the hormone guys all the time. You know, they're hip to these things. Oh yeah. Uh, glutathione is a big part of healthy aging. Sure, yeah. So then let's talk about your pro only line. Mm -hmm. I was very curious about that. Yeah, so the pro only line has things that are more powerful in metal detoxification. So if we're doing a general detoxification, I'm gonna be opening up liver pathways, making sure that toxins are moving out, uh, coming from your cells to your blood, to your liver and out with the bile. That's that green stuff that comes out of the liver. And <laughs> it's like a bright green liquid that comes out of the liver and is for digesting fats. And, and your gallbladder houses your bile and squirts it out when you eat. And it's with the bile that all the toxins come. So general detoxification involves opening up liver pathways, getting bile flow and toxins all to go together, and then having a binder in the GI tract, uh, something like charcoal clay. But then when we get into metals, we might get more specific. We might have a binder that's very specific for metals, that's more powerful in uh, sort of stimulating the whole body to drop down uh, to drop down the metals uh, might be uh, a liposomal EDTA, which is a big mobilizer of lead in the body. Uh, we have some antimicrobials that are very strong, like pure artemisinin. And so we keep that to the pro only line. So you, you know, you can do general work with us, but if you want to get up to like really like lowering lead levels, then you should go through a doctor and then they'll use some of our like advanced, uh, advanced products. And that's the pro only. And guess what? You offer test kits. Yeah, we do. And uh, that oh. metals testing was, uh, that was what we all got, that's what we got started in. I had this advanced test for measuring different forms of mercury. And then we tacked on other metal tests, uh, you know, your big toxins like lead, cadmium, arsenic, uh, as, long, as well as the nutritional metals like uh, calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, and so we put those all together in a big panel for looking at the distribution of metals and minerals in your body. I'm looking at it right now. So basically somebody could buy one of your test kits. You come back to them and say, hey, here's what we found and here's what we recommend for the solution. Yeah, you know, they're, sometimes they're, they're getting the testing directly from us. Certain states like Colorado, you can do that. Other ones you have to go through a doctor and so, uh, you know, often they're going through a doctor and then the doctor will ask us for recommendations or we'll train the doctor in how to do this and the doctor will deal with the patient uh, and, and, you know, set up a detoxification protocol for them. That's very interesting. I'd love to kind of do that and see the process and everything because, yeah. you know, customize, it's what I call customized medicine. I mean... You know, one size doesn't fit all. Of course it doesn't. Um, yeah. Same with dosing and everything else. Um, so yep. that's very important. Um, speaking of dosing, talk to me a little bit about CBD. I know that there's products that have like five or 10 milligrams. Um, I was under the impression you, you needed a higher milligram count, um, depending on if you do have an ailment, do you need to saturate your receptors? You know, kind of what does that look like? Well, that's like you said, it becomes very individual. Uh, and, you know, what effect are you trying to get? Are you just trying to sort of, you know, lubricate the whole endocannabinoid system? Are you trying to just calm the brain just a little bit? Or are you really having a hard time and you really need to, uh, to, to press the system and, and saturate it, as you said? So it can be now... First of all, in the delivery system that we use, there's a 6x increase in bioavailability. Got it. And, wow. and so, uh, a, you know, a 10 or 12 milligram dose is going to register like 60, you know, to 70 milligrams. And so that does become a relevant amount. So if you're just taking five or 10 milligrams in a capsule uh, with some oil, no, that's not going to do a whole lot for you. And then wow. it depends what your size is and stuff. And so with the kids, we start low. And then 
what we'll do is we'll have people titrate up. And that's sort of the safest way to go is start at this level here. Try two pumps here. Like a Z pack. What's that? Like a Z pack kind of. Yeah, we'll start low and then we'll start bringing it up and get to, you know, the effects you want. Now, we know general dosing is going to work for most people to calm the system down and allow them to detoxify. And so if they want just a simple dosing, we'll put them on that. Uh, but when you're looking at a more complex problem, then we recommend people to titrate up and find out where they're getting the effects. Well, here's the key, right? So how many products say, uh, you know, a certainly a certain delivery system, let's say nano, right? So you yeah. just said six times, but if that product actually doesn't have nanotechnology, then it's a waste. You're wasting it, your money. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is the perfect place for a delivery system where the absorption's low and the price is high. And then we can bridge that gap. You're gonna cost, you know, it might cost twice as much to get it like we do, but you're getting six times more in. So there's a threefold drop in cost per milligram in the blood. So people have to get over that hurdle and not say, well, this is cheaper to get into. Like what's gonna get it into the blood? But then you have all these people saying they're nano and saying they're high absorption. Uh, there's a slide I use all the time and all these people claim nano. And fortunately, when you get a real nano product, it goes transparent. And the cheap emulsions are a very opaque brown to white. And if you can't see through it, it is not nano. Those, interesting. So the term, yeah, and, it's, and this is interesting why. So the term nano means that the particle you're looking at here, it's a droplet of oil suspended in water. Yep. The droplet has to be less than 100 nanometers to call it nano. That's the whole idea of nanotech. Was the, the word was invented by the catalyst industry. They were making little mineral nanoparticles. And when people get worried about nano being bad for you, that's the mineral nanoparticles, like titanium dioxide nanoparticle. That gets into your body and it's hard to get out, makes free radicals, it's a bad thing. But these little fat droplets at the nano size, these are things you already make in your body. It's the way you move oil around your body. And so it's natural. But nano, from the catalyst industry, they're like, well, below 100 is where the magic is. So we're going to call anything below 100 nanometers nano. All right, so that holds true here as well. Now, it just happens to be that as you go down to 100 nanometers and below, the dispersion, it's called an emulsion, it's little droplets of oil and water, goes transparent because the droplets of oil are then smaller than the wavelengths of light. Got so it. That's okay. why you can't look at these things under a microscope either. Because like a light microscope, think like a real nice German microscope, you're looking down there, they can't see below 200 nanometers because light is bigger than that. And so you have to use electron microscopes or laser sizers. And we have two, three laser sizers in house and we use electron microscopes at uh, CU Boulder. And we have all this stuff, you know, we know exactly what we have. Now these other people, if you see something that looks like milk or like chocolate milk, uh, that's in the like two, three, four, five hundred nanometer range. And those just don't, they don't absorb very quickly and they don't have this six hex increase in bioavailability. They talk like they do and everybody's nano this, nano that. I, I, you know, I very rarely see an authentic product out there. I think maybe there's one. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That's the thing. And, and it's really hard, um, you know, of course, for, for a person who knows nothing about it, hearing all this stuff about CBD. And, you know, this happened back when Charlotte Figgy and, you know, the children with epilepsy came about. They yep. started a Facebook group and I saw the evolution. I was one of the first on there. And you wouldn't believe people were posting what they bought, anything yeah. that had CBD. And yeah. there was this woman in Colorado way back in the day, and she put her product in a, like a cough syrup bottle. No one had that. And it said, it said CBD syrup. Well, we ended up testing, I don't even know how many, this is when I owned my testing lab, oh, nothing. Yeah not even traces of THC. 
<laughs> and we went to her and said, you know, you really can't sell this product. And she's like, but it's my best seller. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, still. So, and, a, a, you know, most people back in 2010, they had no idea what CBD was. Oh, no. And they would constantly say, Jennifer, the test results are wrong. How can I get zero CBD and CBN all the time? <laughs> well, because everybody, you know, we've bred out for decades. Uh, the minor cannabinoids. Yeah. Um, yeah, it so, was a race to the top of the THC scale. That's exactly right. And so a lot of these companies early on, they got rid of strains because they didn't get you high and they were ugly. And guess what? They were minor cannabinoids. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Um, so with, with all the fraud that's going on, uh, we just saw our first lawsuit um, for a CBD company that got a warning letter um, that the FDA, they didn't obviously think it was important. And so now the FDA is suing them. Let's talk a little bit about medical claims and kind of, you know, some of your products, obviously there's been testing on supplements. Um, can you make claims on vitamin C, if you will, or melatonin? If you yeah, mix that, I got two things here. One is one is testing for what we call potency testing. Every time, so the thing is, the dietary supplement world. I mean, there are fringe characters there, but the the players in what's called the professional space, where you're selling to doctors and they're reselling, are really high end. And for you know, this is just people are like, well, we have to test more. Well, it's the law, okay? It's not like, well, we test everything. Everybody's supposed to test everything. It is the freaking law, right? And so when it comes in, you do an identity test. You make sure the vitamin C is vitamin C. It's not melamine or something. And when the CBD comes in, you make sure what you do a whole profile on it. What are all the ratios on it? Uh, you'll do uh, microbial testing, metals testing. You qualify that ingredient coming in. Then you make your product and then you do potency testing. I said there's 12 milligrams in you know, four pumps. There is 12 milligrams, great. And you validate all this stuff. This is just what's done in the professional realm, uh, not in the garages. And so that's just part of, that's just what we are and what we do. Uh, but then claims are a different thing. So in dietary supplements, there's what's called structure function claims. You never treat, cure, mitigate, uh, a disease. So if it's called a disease, and, and there's a, always this movement towards making discomfort a disease, you know, they, they right. <laughs> diseases. And as soon as there's a name for a disease, we can't talk about it anymore. You know, that's the pharmaceutical company taking ground for us. But if I'm talking about bioflow, that's a structure, it's called a structure slash function claim. And the function is the movement of bile. So I can talk about promotes healthy bioflow. Uh, you know, with vitamin C, it could be supports proper immune function. The idea with supplements is there is a proper function, you're already there, and the supplement supports you. Now, whether or not this thing does a lot more than that is irrelevant. <laughs> We're not allowed to say that, and if we want to say that, then you have to lead it through drug trials. Uh, and so you're left with these structure function claims. And the gist of that is it's already working, and this helps keep it working. Right, right. Supplements are extremely important, but again, you get what you pay for. The reason supplements are, are more expensive is because there's more testing, there's certification, and all of those things cost money. It's not like you're, oh, I'm going to charge three times the amount. No, it's because you have better ingredients, better testing, formulation, science back. Yeah, versus where it was, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you know, the head of our QA is from pharma, we, the head of manufacturing is from pharma, so we have to pay pharmaceutical salaries to people, and we have to, you know, basically pharmaceutical testing, it's pharmaceutical QA, it's like all that, it costs a fortune, you know, we joke about it being the office of sales prevention, but that's how we keep everything clean and safe. Absolutely. And those are the companies that I want to support. And I want other people to understand the difference between your company and your CBD products versus some multi-level marketing companies, you know who you are, and other CBD companies that are like, woo, I'm just going to 
you know, give a brand to somebody, they'll co-pack it, kind of like supplements in the early days. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, you know, you look at like the multi-levels and it's like, you know, I've dealt with them and they just don't like to pay. They like to have, they pay this much and charge that much. And then they want to pay every, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry in the middle. And so theirs is a race to the cheapest product. Well, and one of them, I won't mention the name, but doctor formulated or whatever that is. And last time I checked, doctors don't formulate medicine. <laughs> yeah, but the public likes this idea of doctor formulated, you know, but, you know, they're not chemists. And, uh, you know, most of the time they don't do that. Someone else comes up with it. And then the doctor says, cool, love it. Put my name on it. Right. Like a celebrity in perfume. Yeah. Yeah, Same exactly. Thing. So it becomes this celebrity doctor thing. And absolutely. Know, the thing is, if you go, you take it apart, you measure it. If they have a C of A, is, you know, if they're talking about sizing, it, does the sizing jive with that? Do they say it's nano, but it's actually looks like milk? Then it's not nano. Do they say there's this many milligrams? Well, send it out and test it. Is there that many milligrams in there? Probably not. Most of those products that I've seen are unstable and separate. And, you know, it, it, when they separate, the cannabinoids all go in one direction. If it's the fat going to the top, the cannabinoids go with that. If they're putting isolate crystal in, in there that might be falling to the bottom. Uh, there's there's yeah. a lot of junk out there. A lot of junk. Um, so you touched on, you use isolates and full spectrum in both in both your herbs or your um uh in the nutritionals plants. and the whole plants and and then we do yeah. we kind of do that in in cannabinoids so i haven't used isolate cbd i've only used oh okay distillates. so how come you haven't uh i'm not a big fan of isolate in the cbd world uh i'm not totally against it so it, you get the thing that I like to think about now, we talk about the entourage effect. Now with cannabis, cannabis got a great profile of all the things in it. And okay. people like to say, oh, it's a whole plant extract. And then it'll be like totally clear. It's like, well, how whole plant are you? Because there's no chlorophyll in it anymore. There's no polyphenols in it anymore. There's, you know, there's no minerals in it. Stop telling me it's whole plant. Like, you know, you're this guy putting every part of the plant in there. Uh, you, you know, really there's the oils and how many of the cannabinoids in the oils and how many terpenes do you have in there? All right. So true full, full spectrum with the whole entourage. I like to talk about all the, all the terpenes and all the cannabinoids together being the entourage effect. Now it's very rare that you get all that, but the beauty of the cannabis entourage is multiple different cannabinoids, all doing things a little bit differently. Uh, like when you have a marijuana that is all THC and no CBD, no CBG, no CBN, it's very monodimensional and it like tweaks you out. You know, it's uh, yeah, pleasant. I've heard that. And when you balance it with more CBD, the whole experience is much more rounded and much more pleasant. Uh, and a lot of these strains, you know, back in the day, I grew skunk number one. It was like a really balanced strain. It was really, really good. Uh, and you don't see those anymore. You see these, you know, you know, train wrecks and, you know, things that are like really monodimensional. So we want, we want some more broadness to it. We want lots of different things. Now in hemp, we're not going to have THC a lot. We're going to have a little bit. And right. then there'll be a, a ratio in your full spectrum, a ratio of CBD to THC. Now, I love all the terpenes. I love all the other cannabinoids, but those are the dominant ones. Those are what's really setting the tone. And if you're going to eat these, you're going to heat them up and decarboxylate them anyway so that they cross the blood-brain barrier. And when you do that, you're going to lose your terpenes, like 90% of your terpenes. So how are you going to deal with the terpenes and how do we deal with the ratios of cannabinoids? So we have, you'll talk about full spectrum and that includes THC and we'll have a decent amount of other cannabinoids. And then your broad spectrum. Broad spectrum, you uh, take out the THC, either by distillation or chromatography. You've got CBD, you've got a few other cannabinoids, but the profiles become a little bit more monodimensional. And then you have isolate, and that's totally crystalline CBD, totally monodimensional. So where are you gonna work with on this plant? Now, one thing I'd like to talk about is that when we're formulating products with CBD, 
don't think about just CBD. Your entourage is all of nature. Right. You've got all of the different plant compounds, whether they're isolated or full botanicals. You've got neurotransmitters. You've got hormones. You've got vitamins. You've everything is your palate. And so, so I like to blend curcumin and, and CBD and Boswellia, these other things that lend towards its anti-inflammatory side. You can change, you can get from food-based terpenes, any terpene you want, and you can put any terpene profile together that you want to have. And so that's the way that we approach it. I like to use full spectrum. And when I do that, I'm selecting from my suppliers for a ratio of CBD to THC. And I try to keep that between 25 and 30 parts CBD to one part THC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Enough THC to go in and activate the cannabinoid receptors wow. because CBD doesn't directly activate the cannabinoid receptors. It builds your endocannabinoids. So it, it stimulates synthesis of two arachidonoglycerol, one of your endocannabinoids, and it blocks the breakdown of anandamide, your other main endocannabinoid. So indirectly it's building that, but, and they can strike the CB receptors and it sort of highlights them. It sort of lowers their activation potential. It's like, it makes them want to activate more and it, shifts focus over towards CB2. That's why when you have THC alone versus with CBD, when you have THC and CBD together, less of the THC is going to CB1 that gets you high and more is going to CB2, which is anti-inflammatory. That's why it's more of a body and relaxing type of high. All right. And that's so, why THC curbs the effect of, or CBD curbs CBD the CBD curbs the, the hyper psychotropic effect of, of right. THC. Right. But then we use another terpene that also activates the CB receptors, and it's called beta caryophyllin. And we, oh. it's naturally present in, can, in cannabis, but we get it from clove and cinnamon and amplify its effect. And that's oh. especially important when we go to broad spectrum. So some people are drug tested. And if you take our full spectrum THC and go get a drug test, you'll probably hit positive, depending on the oh. dose you're taking, because there's enough THC in there. You go to broad spectrum, you will never test positive. But now we need a little bit more leverage on the CB receptors, so we put in more beta caryophyllin. So wow. we're using the entourage that's available to us in our natural medicine uh, treasure chest, and we're, you know, we're blending those things in. And that's just our base products. Then we get to our CBD synergies line, and then we're putting whole botanical extracts in. We're like in our sleep formula, we're putting melatonin, we're putting 5-HTP, we're putting GABA, we're putting skullcap extract, uh, passion flower extract, creating a real entourage for taking CBD's calming and turning that into a sleep formula. For the pain, we're blending in curcumin that's already used for pain, Boswellia, uh, and, and we're putting those all together with a big dose of different terpenes. And now we got terpenes, we're taking terpenes out of the turmeric plant and amplifying those. And people aren't usually, they, they don't look at those terpenes in the other things. Uh, they're called turmerones. And so we use the turmerone, we use a, a sap from turmeric called oleo resin, and then the purified curcumin, all together with full spectrum CBD uh, and, uh, and the Boswellia. Boswellia, people don't know as much, but it's always blended with uh, curcumin for an anti-inflammatory effect. Boswellia is an extract of frankincense. So that's how we look at that. I have a lot. I love essential oils. I do. I diffuse them. I put them in water. I mean, it's, it's, it's natural medicine, of course. And that's, you know, that's the most important thing. And I think moving forward, hopefully we're shifting away from pharmaceuticals. Of course they have their place. Um, but I think people want more of a natural remedy. And I think that cannabis has, has been the catalyst for that. I think people will look more for supplements now and, and understand delivery systems and, and everything like that. It, it yeah. has. It's, it's made people more sophisticated uh, and like delivery systems were like really nothing in the nutraceutical space. There was a couple of us uh, and cannabis really amplified the, the focus on it. There was a lot of charlatanry around it, but there was smarter people getting into it. But yeah, I mean, I saw, you know, relatives of mine who really didn't do much in the natural space 
going to it for pain, arthritis, discomfort, and they were starting to explore it. And that's opened them up to all these other things as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, God, I could speak to you forever. I had a ton more questions, but we really don't have time. I do want to touch real quick on CBD and antibacterial and hand sanitizer that every Tom, Dick and Harry is jumping on right now. Can you say a couple words about that? Well, the whole put CBD in everything got really annoying. Uh, and, and it just became this kind of gimmick. I mean, there's a loose justification for CBD uh, in, uh, in a hand san sanitizer, because if you're doing it all the time, you're going to dry out the skin and sure. start having irritation and you might get a little allergic to it. And so CBD does work on the trip B receptors, which might be able to calm down some of that irritation. I'd rather have CBD lotion. Just a gimmick. I'd rather have CBD lotion then. Or exactly. Yeah. I mean, take some right. CBD, do it like a real CBD product. Cause you know, I bet there's really nothing in those products anyways. 100%. And wow, I am just seeing more and more about it on LinkedIn. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, uh, the, and that's why I keep educating. So people do not waste their money on products that don't work and, and understanding why they don't work. Um, anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure, Dr. Shade. And I definitely will have you on again. Um, and I'll be watching your company closely. If you want any more information about Dr. Shade, you can look at their website, quicksilverscientific.com. And as always, send your questions or comments to cultivate at cannabistech.com. Thank you so much, Dr. Shade. Thank you.